sometimes feel like letting agents and landlords speak another language. Rental jargon can be really confusing, but don't worry, I'm Nicola Hume. I'm here to help translate for you. Now, in this episode, I'm going to be explaining what it means when you see the term break clause in your lease. And don't forget to explore the renting section of the Move IQ website because we have loads of blogs on there to help you through every step from finding the right rental to moving out at the end of your tenancy. Which brings me to the break clause. Now, your tenancy will typically be a fixed term agreement, anything from six months to three years. If you want to end the tenancy earlier than this, you either need your landlord's permission or to implement the break clause. This is a section in the tenancy agreement which details when and how you or the landlord can bring your tenancy to an early end. It might not be labelled as a break clause, so check your tenancy agreement for anything referring to early termination. The break clause should clearly state the earliest you can give notice and how long that notice should be. For example, a 12-month tenancy agreement with a six-month break clause would allow either the landlord or the tenant to give notice usually two months after the first six months. Break clauses can be landlord only or tenant only, but more typically it will be mutual, meaning either party could serve notice without having to give a reason. Ultimately, this is about providing both you and the landlord with a degree of flexibility in case one party has a sudden change of circumstance. Most break clauses stipulate a particular way a notice should be served. You'll usually have to do this in writing, so it is wise to check with the landlord or the agent whether an email is acceptable. If it is, always ask for an email in reply to confirm that it has been received. It is worth noting that once you've served the notice to end the tenancy, you can't change your mind without the agreement of the landlord. If the break clause isn't clear, it is essential that you check when you sign the tenancy agreement. Ask for clarification. Do this in writing or by email. So then you have a clear and written trail of the questions and the answers. Once you've given notice, your tenancy will cease at the end of the notice period. After this time, you won't be liable for rent and you won't have the right to live there either. So what happens if you don't have a break clause? If you haven't yet signed the tenancy agreement, you can ask for one to be included. It'll usually be written by the letting agent. So do check the clause very carefully to make sure that it does indeed say what you've asked for. If you've already signed the contract and there's no break clause, you can't leave your tenancy early unless the landlord agrees. It's worth getting in touch to put your position across. If they agree, you might still have to pay rent until new tenants are found, even if you're no longer living there. You'll also be liable for reasonable costs of finding new tenants. If they don't agree, while there isn't anything stopping you from physically moving out, you'll still be liable for the rent until the end of the original tenancy. As you can see, a break clause can be, well, make or break. So it's one of the things that you need to look carefully at when entering a rental agreement. We have plenty more expert advice on the way, so please do subscribe and hit that alert button to join me next time.